Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Grimdark and my first impressions of the subgenre. So, as always, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you leave a comment down below with um, some of your favorite aspects about the Grimdark subgenre. So, as always, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And let's begin. So, the subgenre of Grimdark is a subgenre that I honestly originally thought was more like a sub subgenre. I thought it was very um, specific to the fantasy genre. So, I thought it was like a subgenre under that subgenre. I didn't really think about it, you know, applying to many different genres until I read Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. And then when I finished that, I was like, okay, there's definitely Grimdark sci fi. So I started basically rethinking about how I wanted to talk about Grimdark. So I kind of want to talk about it from a very generic, not even generic, but kind of a very high level perspective about the subgenre itself. And then I want to talk about how it applies to some of the, my more recent reads that I've been reading, like Joe Abercrombie and of course uh, Pierce Brown. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with that. <laughs> So, there's many interpretations of what the grimdark genre really is, but it's often categorized by having nihilistic characters or settings, as well as being oftentimes a dystopian sort of story, and having characters that are essentially entirely morally gray. There are rarely any, if ever, any, actually I don't think there are ever any direct heroes in grimdark, because the type of settings that a grimdark story often lives in is not conducive for a classic hero archetype. So Jared Shuren, if I'm pronouncing that last name right, an anthology writer from the UK, often um, classifies Grimdark as having essentially these three main components. Well, these two um, aspects, or three really, are kind of more rule of thumb. So he basically says that um, you know it's Grimdark when they make it explicit that the monarchs are worthless and that there are no heroes and that the story is essentially an anti-Tolkien story. Because that's often how um, the genre is categorized. It's often categorized in opposition to more classic high fantasy like Tolkien. So Grimdark is often called the anti-Tolkien genre. Or Tolkien. God, it's hard to say his name. <laughs> I feel like one of the best examples of Grimdark has to be A Song of Ice and Fire. And it's also, um, the, its popularity kind of spiked at a time when we had just finished all the adaptations of Lord of the Rings. So when the very grim, dark Game of Thrones TV show came out, right after we finished a very classic high fantasy Lord of the Rings, I can see that that opposition and the interest in the opposite type of, um, you know, outlook on the genre would definitely take off the way it did. So apart from that circumstance, these two writers are often categorized against each other when you're talking grim, dark versus non grim, dark is often Tolkien versus Martin. Because most people see A Song of Ice and Fire as like anti-Tolkien. It is very much, there is no main hero, there is no chosen one, there is no dark lord. Like everything is gray, the world is kind of nihilistic. There is no like ragtag group of people that is going to make a gigantic difference in the entire world and change the way the world works. And based on the way the show even goes, it kind of makes you feel like grim dark is more of a reality in real life because we just couldn't get a happy ending or even a very satisfying ending, at least if you listen to the internet. So my first foray into the subgenre of Grim Dark definitely is with Joe Abercrombie. I mean, I guess technically it was with The Song of Ice and Fire because I read like the first two books some years ago, but I didn't continue because I wanted to wait for Winds of Winter, which still hasn't come out, much less Dream of Spring. So whatever, not even thinking about it anymore. I'm still just a little bitter about it, but not even going to think too much about it. But my first true introduction was with the first Law series with Joe Abercrombie, as I talked about in my reviews for the first trilogy. So my understanding of Grimdark definitely came from a place of very gray characters, no heroes, and a fairly nihilistic world. So as I mentioned in my book reviews for those uh, books of the first trilogy, the world building is very minimal. He doesn't really go into a lot of detail about the world. You just kind of get the sense of sense and impression that this is a world that's perpetually at war. And there's just constantly different wars with dis different factions that goes on, kind of in, like medieval times. So it's a, you know kind of a familiar location where you don't really need to expound on it all that much. 
but the characters are really where it comes into play. The way the society works among all these characters, you really do get a sense of nihilism because even when people try to do nice things and try to do an altruistic deed, like it comes back and it bites them on the ass. So they kind of learn the lesson, you don't do that. And then we also learn in the series that the monarchies are completely worthless. Basically, the biggest one that we see, we learn, has been a puppet forever. So the entire lineage of the kings of that kingdom are basically worthless. And like so the people that we would think are archetypical heroes aren't because they just aren't because this world isn't really conducive to it. And some of the characters that we could think is closest to classic good, like a lawful good, they end up being gray by the end of the series. So it's very much categorized as grim dark by way of its characters and the plot overall. Because the entire like catalyst and the events and stuff that are going on is very much just people trying to defend their homes but then the other half of it is very much people playing chess so there's like no good guys there's not even any true classic bad guys like there's no dark lord there's no big evil there's no you know we just need to fix this and it'll fix everything kind of situation so it's very much like um I mean, I hesitate to call it realistic because the world isn't even that nihilistic. Like, it can be incredibly nihilistic, especially from certain people's perspective and stuff. But it's not, you know, to this degree. So I do want to say it has this sense of realism, but I just hesitate to say that real life is this nihilistic because holy crap, Joe Abercrombie did a great job with it. And that's the difference for me, though. Um, what I noticed when reading um, Lightbringer, that is very sci-fi grimdark. But that is sci-fi grimdark based on the settings and the world and the events that's going on. It's less about the characters. Um, or at least it's less grimdark because of the characters um, instead of the setting. Because the characters are still, um, at least the majority of our main characters, are still somewhere in that realm of lawful good. So they're still very much prioritizing a greater good and a very altruistic kind of goal. But the world they're in, it just seems to constantly push back against them and kind of constantly keep them down. And we're in a war that's gone on for so long, it just feels like perpetual war. And Pierce Brown writes the story in such a way where you feel so entrenched and mired in all the muck and just grossness of it all, that you yourself feel incredibly exhausted by this world that they're in. So it's very grimdark from that perspective. More setting and plot versus the characters. So that's when I kind of realized, okay, you can do grimdark in a number of ways, like in ways that I hadn't really considered. So you can specialize in certain areas and lean heavily into um, placing all the grimdark kind of tropes and archetypes and like typical things into various parts of the story. Like there is even um, the most recent secret project book from Brandon Sanderson. Um, no spoilers for it, but the setting is a very, very difficult setting just physically. So you could almost take a setting like that and make the world feel incredibly grim dark just by how harsh the environment is. So there's just various ways that this entire subgenre can be explored. And I think it's very fascinating because I just kind of, you know, dismissed it. I don't really think too much about what my brain initially considered sub subgenres, but I think this is really a regular subgenre because it can apply to technically sci-fi is a subgenre of fiction just like fantasy so then does that make grim dark sci-fi still technically a sub sub genre i might be thinking too much about it but that's kind of where my brain goes with it so i haven't read many grim dark stories as i said only really lightbringer and the first law trilogy and a little bit of the song of ice and fire but the thing that like really like holds a great impression on me is joe abercrombie's interpretation probably because i finished an entire one of his trilogies but it's really just the characters. The characters that he writes in the First Law Trilogy, the first one, are very, very compelling. They're like doing some despicable stuff and just they're in situations that are terrible and horrible, but they're so incredibly compelling. You desperately want to know what's going to happen next, what they're going to do next, what are they going to get into, how are they going to get out of the situation they're in. So that led me to a very deep sense of appreciation for the genre. Even though everything around it is so completely dark and nihilistic and stuff that you would think it's hard to really enjoy um, he managed to inject some very very enjoyable characters even though some of the stuff they do is just morally repugnant but 
they're just so well written and they're so fascinating and they're so interesting to follow that you're just like, God, I just got to know what else happens. So it's just really, really well done from that perspective. And because of that, I'm really looking forward to getting into more of the Joe Abercrombie series, the First Law series. Um, next up is going to definitely be the standalones. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to check out those reviews. And then after that, we're going to jump into the next trilogy. But that's probably going to really kick off in November when we're out of spooky season. So those are my first impressions of Grimdark as being someone who is very much not um, used to this subgenre and have very little experience reading or listening to or watching stories that definitely classify into this genre. I think it's really cool. I like it and I like the way that Joe Abercrombie specifically uses it and I kind of like the way Pierce Brown was able to kind of expand my um, acknowledgement of the way the subgenre can be used. So I'm really looking forward to it and yeah, as I said before, let's move on to the standalones for some more grim dark so as always make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite grim dark stories like what do you think about those two examples that i gave how do you think about the way in which grim dark is used in the different areas they can lean on and all that kind of stuff just let me know your thoughts about this whole thing in the comments down below and i will talk to you all next time peace